Thank you, Sandy. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Public Action Plan and DRGR training. My name is Hannah Nelson, and I am a member of the HUD Headquarters DRGR team, um, but I'm based out of Houston, Texas. And I wanted to get us started today with a quick welcome on behalf of the HUD DRGR team and Stephen Edwards, who is with HUD. Um, Stephen will be joining myself, and we're here and available throughout the training to help answer any questions. Um, we hope you all are somewhat familiar with the new public action plan feature in DRGR, but by now, if not, you definitely will be after this presentation. Um, I can tell you all that a lot of hard work has gone into developing this feature in DRGR, and I hope you find this presentation helpful. So definitely use this time today to ask us any questions, and if for some reason we can't provide an answer, we will follow up with whoever asked the question directly. Um, so with that, again, welcome, and I will pass it over to our fantastic presenter, Jennifer Alpha. Thanks, Anna. Um, really great to be here with everybody today. Um, just want to remind everybody that uh, the session is being recorded and there will be an archive created on the HUD exchange. Um, so if for some reason you can't stay for the whole thing or you have a colleague who is not available to watch, this will be available at a later date. Uh, the archive will include the audio, audio and visual recording, a PDF of the presentation slides, and a written transcript. Additionally, the PDF of the slides is in the chat. If you go over to the chat box, there's a hyperlink that you can click on to get the slides now if you want to start looking at those as we're going through the presentation together. Um, <clears throat> so uh, with that, we're just going to jump into the presentation. So again, my name is Jennifer Alpha with TDA Consulting. Um, we're going to have a few training objectives today. The first is an overview of the action plan, the public action plan. That's what we're going to have our um, primary focus on today. But we will be talking a bit about the differences between the public action plan and the DRGR action plan. And we'll describe what those differences are. Um, and then also we're going to get into how you develop the public action plan in DRGR. Today's presentation is a slide format, but I wanted to remind everybody about the, um, the training video that is available on the HUD Exchange that gets into a more of a demonstration within the DRGR system. And so um, I'm going to put in the chat box here um, a link to that presentation, um, and hopefully that works. Let me see, um, because this will give you more of um, like a step-by-step -step within the system. It's like live demonstration. So um, let me go ahead and try to copy that for you. And if I'm not successful this time, maybe Hannah can pop it in there. Um, so oops, there it goes, it went. Okay, so you can grab that um, URL from the chat, save it for later. Um, but today you're going to get a nice overview of how the public action plan works and what it's all about. So let's get into a public action plan overview. Um, so public law um, 117.43 now requires grantees allocated funds under the notice to submit their action plan via DRGR. So this is what we're going to be calling the public action plan as we go through this training. Um, it can no longer be submitted via email, as was previously done for older appropriations. This new public action plan requirement, just to reiter reiterate, is for fiscal year 20 grantees. It does not apply to any existing grants, and so those paper or published action plans that grantees have submitted in the past outside of DRGR will remain. And what this means is that those older grantees and grants will continue to submit their amendments and make edits to their paper action plans outside of the DRGR system. So again, just to recap, this, this requirement of the public action plan is for fiscal year 20 grantees. Um, so the fiscal year 20 grantees are going to develop and submit their public action plan via DRGR for HUD review and approval. 
This public action plan then serves as an umbrella for the DRGR action plan. And what we're calling the DRGR action plan is actually all of your projects and activities. So we're calling this a single action plan within DRGR that includes the grantees first submitting the public action plan, and then, as done previously by all grantees for disaster recovery funds, you'll develop your DRGR action plan, which is going to be your projects and activities to start spending those funds within DRGR. So um, we're going to go over several times how, the, how this works in the system. Um, so you'll, you'll, you'll get this drilled very deeply into your brain in just a moment. <laughs> uh, so in summary, though, uh, there's no change for older grantees with processing paper or published action plans. The new fiscal year 20 grantees will submit the public action plan and DRGR action plan in DRGR. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So this um, this here on this screen is uh, some of the language um, from the actual Federal Register notice, and you can go ahead and read that there on the screen. But as you can see in this language, um, it actually states that the public action plan must be developed and submitted in DRGR for applicable grantees, including all action plan amendments. So any substantial or non-substantial amendments will now be submitted through DRGR. And this section also notes um, the public action plan is different than the DRGR action plan. And it states that the DRGR action plan is a comprehensive description of projects and activities in the system. So this, again, this DRGR action plan of projects and activities is the same as how current grantees from older appropriations who are not going to be using the public action plan are, are using DRGR now to set up um, draws against their projects and activities. <clears throat> Jennifer, so, are yeah. you advancing the slide? Because it's not moving. I am. I should be on slide six. Are you not seeing that? Oh, now, now it is. Someone had just mentioned that. Okay. Okay. Yep. Nope. I'm I'm advancing. Um, let stop me though if um, for some reason that is is not working anymore. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's talk a little bit more here about the public action plan overview. We want to reiterate that the new public action plan feature in DRGR will allow grantees to develop and submit the same information that they would have included in those paper or published action plans um, under past disaster recovery grants. So it's all the same information. Now you're just taking it and you're putting it into DRGR. Um, so most grantees would have previously produced large Word documents with text and tables and maps, some images, um, and this would ultimately be turned into a PDF for public comment or to post to their website. So this new DRGR public action plan will give grantees the same opportunities to post the plan. So there's not going to be a loss of transparency for the public. Uh, folks will still be able to see how you're using your funds. The DRGR public action plan um, will still provide a thorough and detailed description for the public. Um, it's just going to be produced within the system. And you'll be able to download the public action plan from DRGR so that you can post it and use it for you know, creating um, translations and things like that. And note that all amendments will also be made through DRGR. So both your substantial and non-substantial amendments are going to be made in the system, and we're going to go over submissions and how they work um, towards the end of this presentation. Um, so I should be on slide seven now, and hopefully everybody can see that. All right, so um, we've talked about the DRGR action plan. Uh, which includes your projects and activities. Um, now, this is what existing grantees have been using all along <clears throat> and where all of the details of your program really live within your activity structure. Um, and so 
I've mentioned that the public action plan feature is new in DRGR, but the setup and project of projects and activities for grantees is going to be the same as it's always been. So um, you're gonna build out your details of your activities within the overall structure of the public action plan. And you know, you'll see in DRGR as you move through, if you're new to DRGR, brand new and have never used it before, that your DRGR action plan of projects and activities is a comprehensive description of what you're doing in your overall program. Um, these activities will be associated with grantee programs once you um, once you have your both both sides of your action plan built out, the public action plan and the DRGR action plan. And then data is going to be aggregated from those activities at the grantee program level. Okay, so let's go over a little bit about the relationship between the public action plan and the DRGR action plan. Um, the public action plan has a direct relationship with the DRGR action plan. Remember that the public action plan is really serving as the umbrella for the DRGR action plan. Um, and I know we keep saying this, uh, but it, it can be confusing for folks. And we're going to give you a visual here in a moment as well, so you can really see how this, how this looks inside the system. Um, a grantee will need to set up all of their grantee programs in the public action plan in order for grantees to associate those activities they create in the DRG or action plan to the program. And we're going to go over more details on grantee programs as we advance through the presentation. Uh, the public action plan developed in DRGR can be downloaded to allow grantees to complete translation requirements for public comment and to post to their website. This is similar to how the DRGR action plan can currently be downloaded in the system. Now, as we previously mentioned, the public action plan is approved first, and then the DRGR action plan is reviewed and approved. Uh, submittal and approval of the DRGR action plan is an important step because that is going to allow grantees to start drawing their funds against activities and allow them to submit their QPRs. So here's where we start to provide some visuals for those of you who are better at visual learning. Um, this may help describe the difference between the public action plan and DRG or action plan a little better and then also how they work together. So the grantee first develops their public action plan, which is this hierarchy that you see here on the left. Um, you're going to be using the narrative templates that are in DRGR to build out your public action plan. It's going to give you opportunities to enter narratives, maps, data tables, all those things that you would have put into your paper action plan. And it gives you the opportunity to create the required and applicable grantee programs that HUD will review and approve. So once you have this um, grantee uh, this public action plan set up with your grantee program, then you're going to create your DRGR action plan. And as you can see, your DRGR action plan is going to have your projects and your activities. And this structure will be familiar to anybody who has received a disaster recovery grant in the past, because this right side of this hierarchy chart here is really what folks have been working with all along. So the new part is just the part on the left. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to just take a, a little bit of a closer peek here at the, the right side, which is that DRGR action plan, your projects and activities. Um, so projects and activities still exist for grantees, um, for all grantees of disaster recovery front funds. Um, we just wanted to reiterate that even though there are now these programs in your public action plan, you're still going to create projects in your DRGR action plan because you need a place for those activities to live in your DRG or action plan. So as you can see, the hierarchy goes projects and then activities within the project. Further though, you're gonna associate those activities with grantee programs over in the public action plan side um, so that you'll be able to aggregate data across activities associated with those grantee programs. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, DRGR modules. 
just to further demonstrate how DRGR is mostly the same as it was um, before the public action plan rollout with just some small changes to accommodate the public action plan. Um, so as you can see, um, the DRGR modules required to meet reporting requirements are your Manage My Grants module. This is where you will be developing your public action plan and your DRGR action plan, which is your projects and activities. Your Manage My Financials module and the Manage My Compliance module. You can also support your reporting requirements through the use of these other modules like administration, homepage, data analytics, and my profile. So all of those will give you some information that's going to be helpful to you as you're um, navigating through your programs. <clears throat> so this is a, a full list of the different modules within DRGR. Um, they all still work the same in the system, even with the addition of the public action plan. Um, the public action plan, including grantee programs, is going to show aggregated data at the program level for activities in the public action plan. So it's really just another layer of data available for reporting and transparency. Um, but as you can see, you have your Manage My Grants module where you're going to build out your public action plan. Um, this is going to identify your proposed use of funds, and you're going to develop and submit this to HUD for review and approval through DRGR. You also have your DRGR action plan under the Manage My Grants module, and this is really the core of DRGR reporting and allows HUD to monitor grantee projects and activities, which is where you have a lot of your granular details about your program. Um, the Manage My Grants module is also where you have your performance reports. So you'll be submitting quarterly performance reports to show your accomplishments and share information. Um, if your action plan is not set up properly in DRGR, you will have some difficulty in reporting on your requirements in the QPRs. So you really want to take your time with your action plan setup. If you ever have questions, make sure that you reach out to your HUD rep so that uh, you're having a good foundation for your program in your action plan because that's really going to help you out later in your QPRs. The Manage My Financials module, this is where you are going to do everything related to financials. So grantees um, can access grant funds by obligating funds and creating vouchers at the activity level. Again, activity level, that's where a lot of your granular detail is going to live. So project and activity budgets are set in the action plan, however, and they're going to limit the amount of funds a grantee can obligate and draw for that activity. So those were the, the three main, these were the three main components that you're going to be using to manage your grant. But on the home and my profile sections, you get some important information. Um, it displays useful resources and tasks based on the user role on the home page. And your My Profile um, part of DRGR will show the user's information and roles. In the administration module, that's where user roles are managed. Um, so we want to make sure that we have the right, right roles to um, complete tasks in DRGR that we've been assigned. Talk with your grantee admin if you think you don't have the right roles, and they can help adjust those. Um, Grantees must have at least two DRGR users, but at least four are recommended as, as backups. The Manage My Compliance module is um, a place where you can um, review flags that have been generated based on criteria in the DRGR system. So if a criteria is triggered because of a compliance matter, for example, a flag will be applied in DRGR, and you can review those flags and go into the my, Manage My Compliance module to um, resolve or remediate the flags. This is also where you'll be uh, documenting your monitoring, audit, and TA that you're providing to your subrecipients. So, and then finally, the data analytics module, last but certainly not least, is where you're going to find your reports. And these are incredibly useful to determine the status of users, activities, financial information, basically anything you use to manage your program. Um, you can find aggregated data on it in the data analytics module. 
So that's just an overview of what's in DRGR and how you can use it to help you out in case you are brand new to the system. For those of you who have been using DRGR for a long time, that'll be um, just a refresher. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about um, a new requirement, and that's the, the uh, mitigation set aside. So um, the PL 117.43 includes a 15% mitigation set aside amount requirement for mitigation only activities. And HUD has developed the ability for grantees to identify mitigation only activities in DRGR um, by selecting mitigation only activity types. So this allows grantees and HUD to track budgets funds drawn and expenditures for those mitigation identified activities. And the activity types in DRGR that begin with MIT, and you'll see those when you start to build out your activities from the activity type drop, drop down, those are designated as the mitigation only activities. Um, and so grantees should use these activity types um, to identify their mitigation only activities so that it can track their progress towards the 15% set aside. And you, there is a fact sheet for this on the HUD exchange. And again, I'm going to um, paste the link in the chat. So if um, you wanna grab that link and take a look at it, you will be able to get a little more information around this topic. All right. <clears throat> so that is the public action plan overview. Um, Hannah and Stephen, is this a good place to stop for questions or are there not enough that I should just keep going? You can keep going, Jennifer. Keep going? Okay, great. Okay, so that's our overview. So that gives you a good understanding of the pub what the public action plan is and how it links to um, the DRGR action plan. We're going to keep talking about, it, talking about that throughout this presentation, really. But now we're going to start to get into the workflow of how you actually create these action plans. <clears throat> okay. So, to start off at the very beginning, um, and this is important, especially for new new grantees to disaster recovery funds. Um, because it's developed in DRGR, you will need to request access for new users if you are not already an existing user of DRGR. Um, so if there are any questions related to how to set up new users, that process is described in the DRGR user manual, and you can access the DRGR user manual on the HUD exchange. The HUD exchange is your friend for resources. Um, there are some really great resources around DRGR there, so I definitely recommend checking that out if you are new to the disaster recovery program. Um, in the meantime, uh, <clears throat> while you're, you know, getting your DRGR access set up, um, the grantee is completing research and analysis to determine disaster recovery needs and how funds will be used to address those needs. The grantee will then use data and narratives, images, maps, all kinds of information to develop its public action plan in DRGR. And once all the required sections of the DRGR action plan, um, public action plan template are completed, they'll then download a copy of the public action plan for comment. And then once the public comment period is over, the grantee will make final edits to the public action plan and submit that for HUD review and approval. Once HUD reviews and approves the public action plan or rejects it, um, the plan may be rejected if there are things that are missing or not fully completed um, or otherwise out of compliance. Um, HUD can reject the public action plan. It would come back to you um, for you to make modifications and resubmit it. But once it's approved, um, the grantee then submits the um, financial certifications and implementation plan via email. So that will happen outside of the system. And then HUD completes their pre-award risk assessment tool and executes the grant agreement. 
So that would get you to the, the point where your public action plan is completed in DRGR, you have your grant agreement executed, you're then gonna move on to develop your DRGR action plan, which again, are your projects and activities in the system. So HUD is gonna review and approve or reject that DRGR action plan as well. Um, so this, you just basically repeat this, this process with your DRGR action plan, which again, are your projects and activities. So you're gonna establish them in DRGR and submit them to HUD for review and approval. Um, a HUD DRGR super user then reduces the restricted balance to allow grantees to access CDBG DR grant funds. And this will allow grantees to start expending funds and start the clock of grantees submitting performance reports in DRGR. And remember, those performance reports are submitted quarterly. Um, so the grantee can then submit vouchers in the Manage My Financials module and proceed with submitting their quarterly performance report no later than 30 days after the end of each quarter. So that's your overall workflow um, for how you will go through setting up your, DR, your public action plan and your DRGR action plan. So now I'm gonna get into some terms and definitions. Um, related to the public action plan, grantee programs, projects, and activities. So that as we talk through the concepts in the rest of this um, presentation, you'll have a better understanding of what all this terminology means. <clears throat> so this is a, a handy chart because it gives you, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it gives you a term, a definition, and it gives you the chapter of the DRGR manual where you can go to learn more about these concepts and get some screenshots with some step-by-step -step instructions. Um, so in the public action plan, which we've been talking about, so I think everybody is pretty familiar with this term, but this is the grantee's action plan for disaster recovery that identifies the proposed use of funds. And note that uh, the public action plan has a separate review status from the DRGR action plan. You are submitting these separately. Um, so just keep in mind that if you've submitted one, it doesn't necessarily mean the other is approved. You have to be mindful of the statuses of, of each plan. Um, but the public action plan is your roadmap to how funds are going to be spent under your grant. And information on the public action plan can be found in Chapter 11 of the DRGR User Manual. Our next term to talk about is the DRGR action plan, which also should be very familiar to everyone by now. Um, DRGR action plan, which is your projects and activities, is a comprehensive description of these projects and activities. Um, so the DRGR action plan, again, has a separate review status from your public action plan. And that's covered in chapter 10 of the user manual. So grantee programs. So we've kind of talked about this term a little bit, and we're gonna get into it in more detail in just a moment. Um, but this is a representative a representation of complex pro programs that um, typically are cate categorized by activity types. Um, so housing, infrastructure, economic development. Um, grantee programs offer a way to group and report cumulative data in illustrative dashboards. So it, it allows you to roll up data into an overall program and kind of see things at a, at a bird's eye view. Um, and you can read more about grantee programs in chapter 13 of the DRGR user manual. Projects, um, again, projects and activities, they make up your DRGR action plan. Um, the most common grouping of activities is a project. So projects represent major programs or responsible organizations, and they're covered in chapter 12 of the, of the DRGR user manual. And then finally, activities, these are associated um, with one project and one grantee program where your public action plan submission is required. Um, but you're always gonna have a, an activity associated to a project. And if you're a grantee that is required to submit the public action plan, each activity will also be associated to a grantee program in the system. Um, activities do contain the most information used by HUD to monitor for compliance and programmatic requirements. So you wanna do a really good job of building out your activities. 
So again, just to kind of reiterate this sequence, um, you're first going to start developing your grantee program. This is what's recommended. Um, these must be developed prior to completing your public action plan template. Um, the grantee programs are going to include things like narratives, budgets, and projections. So uh, that video that I mentioned at the beginning of um, our session today that provides a demonstration of completing things in DRGR, that gets into a lot more detail around how you walk through the development of a grantee program in DRGR. So if you're not sure how to complete the functionality in DRGR around grantee programs, that video will be really helpful because it actually shows you how to set them up. So once you have your grantee programs established, then you can um, complete the public action plan template narrative. So the public action plan template narrative is going to include a lot of narrative fields that you'll need to complete, and we'll show you some screenshots of what that looks like in just a moment. Um, as well as data tables and maps. So just to summarize, create your grantee program. Once you have at least one grantee program created, you can create um, the, you can complete the public action plan template, which is gonna have more narrative, data tables, and maps. Okay, so let's talk about some grantee programs. This is a, a big concept a new concept and a foundational part of the public action plan. So the grantee programs offer a unique way to group and report cumulative data as we discussed. Um, the programs are available to a limited number of grantees based on program appropriation. And once your activities are associated with a grantee program, the data will be able to be aggregated and displayed at the program level under the programs tab on the Manage Action Plan screen. And we're gonna show you some screenshots from DRGR to show you, you know, what those tabs look like. Um, but just know that once you do have your grantee program set up, you'll be able to go into DRGR and look at aggregate data um, for activities that are associated with those programs. So for example, um, you may have a housing grantee program in DRGR and, um, it may be limited to a housing activity type such as housing new construction or rehabilitation and reconstruction. Each activity's activity type will dictate the type of grantee program that you can associate it to. Okay, so this, this is a screenshot of a paper action plan that a grantee would have created prior to the public action plan in DRGR. So I know it's probably a little small on your screen, but as you can see, if you squint a little bit um, under numbers two, three, and four, there are grantee programs detailed. Um, so, you know, in this screenshot, we have um, a housing recovery program, we have an infrastructure recovery program, and we have an economic revitalization program. So, you know, in your old paper, um, your old paper action plan, published plan, you would have detailed these um, programs that you intended to carry out with your grant. So now let's take a look at what it would be like in DRGR. So here we are, this is a screenshot from DRGR of the manage action plan page. Um, so, in, so you'll see that the tab highlighted on the screen here is for programs, that second tab. Um, and near the bottom, you can see that this grantee has a, whole, a, a housing program set up. So again, it's a little small, but down here you can see that they have a housing program set up. And, you know, they would go on to create other programs as well for economic revitalization or infrastructure as needed. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we'll talk more about um, this next, but we just wanted to provide this comparison to show you how the paper version of the action plan really just translates directly into DRGR. Um, so you're gonna be setting up all those same components, but in the DRGR system. And this is an example of how the programs will look once you have them set up in DRGR. All right. <clears throat> Hannah, any questions you wanna review for now?
you might be on mute. I am sorry. We did have a few questions come in. Um, let's see. We, Stephen and I were trying to answer them. I think we have. Um, I'm just going to interrupt you real quick. There are several questions that folks are asking in the chat message. So if you put a put a question in the chat message, those only come directly to the host. If you guys can go into the Q and A box and resubmit your questions that way. That way, the panelists can collect those. Perfect. Thank you, Sandy. So, Jennifer, let's keep going, and then we'll be ready to um, okay. read aloud uh, read aloud some of these questions in the next section. Okay. When we stop the next time. Thank you. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay. So. Now we're going to get, we, you know, we gave you this kind of conceptual overview of what the public action plan is like in DRGR, but now we're going to really start looking inside the system to better understand the public action plan and how it actually gets built out. <clears throat> so um, in DRGR, if you're new to the system, if you're not new to the system, this is just going to be a refresher, but in DRGR, um, you're going to log in and you're going to see um, your home page. This, this is showing you the menu for the Manage My Grants module. But what's important here at the top with these red boxes is that um, this larger red box is where you will lock the grant that you want to work on um, for the session that you're in that, at that time. And you can change this at any time during your session. But this locks the grant. Um, and allows you to complete functionality across modules without having to select your grant every time. And so if you have more than one grant, you really want to make sure that you're locking to the grant that you want to work on. If you just have one, it's going to always populate to the grant that you have. Um, so you want to first lock your grant, and then all of your work to uh, complete the public action plan is going to be done in the Manage My Grants module. That module is accessible by clicking on the columns icon, which is that little um, red square there um, at the top of the toolbar. So you're going to click on that columns icon, and you're going to expand the menu for the Manage My Grants module. Once you expand that um, menu, you can see that uh, this gives you access to your action plans, your projects, and your activities, and your grantee programs. So these are really the four sections that we're going to, you know, you're going to be concentrating on when you're building out your public action plan and then later your DRGR action plan. Um, but to access your action plan, um, you're going to click on, and this being your public action plan for those of you that, you know, are um, required to submit a public action plan, you're going to click on manage action plan under the action plan submenu. So I really like this slide because I think it starts to drive home the, the relationship between the public action plan and the DRGR action plan in the DRGR system. Um, so we've talked about what public action plan means, what DRGR action plan means, how public action plan is really just an umbrella for your DRGR action plan. Um, but now we ask, if we look at it from within DRGR and we see this screenshot here, this is the Manage Action Plan page. So I went and clicked on Manage Action Plan on that path screen. It takes me here. This is the Manage Action Plan page. So the tabs that are highlighted here in yellow for narrative programs and documents and uploads as well there at the end, these will all be used to manage your public action plan. So again, you're going to go into the narratives tab, complete all the public action plan template narratives. This is your programs, where your programs are going to be listed once you build them out, and then your uploaded documents. Your projects and activities tab, this is your DRGR action plan. And again, uploads are useful there as well. So that's why we have um, both the green and yellow boxes around uploads. But the yellow side is going to be your public action plan tab. Your green side is going to be your DRGR action plan tab. And so, again, this is one action plan, 
but we're just making the distinction between the public action plan side, those yellow parts, and the DRGR action plan side, those green parts. So hopefully this slide helps clarify things a little bit. All right. <clears throat> so did you want me to stop here, Hannah, or should I keep going? Let's stop here, and I will try to read some questions out loud Okay. that I think are helpful for the group. Just give me one second. Sure. Okay, we did have one question come in about the um, size limitations and if there's any word or character limit counts. So there is not a, um, there's no restriction to the word or character limit, but for images, there is a limitation. Um, it should, it's limited to 500 KB per image. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear for everyone. But other than that, that's the only limitation. Um, I do just want to reiterate that the public action plan um, feature in DRGR is only going to be used for new grantees who received FY20 funding under um, PL117-43. So just wanted to make sure that was clear again. Um, and then um, we had a couple of questions come in regarding the public comment requirement and process. Um, we will talk about that a little bit later in the presentation, but I wanted you all to know that the public comment process will remain the same, so grantees will do that outside of DRGR. Um, once the public action plan is populated in the system, grantees will have the ability to download a copy of the public action plan and post it to their DR, DR website or wherever they post um, their public action plans or their action plans for um, public comment, they will have the opportunity to download a copy from the system and post it before they submit in DRGR. Let's see, is there another question I wanted to read out loud? I think that's it for now, Jennifer. Okay. And I'll stop again, you know, mm -hmm. in a couple yeah. of questions and read them aloud. Okay, sounds good. And we'll also have some time at the end for questions. Um, so now we're gonna go into, you remember back here, let me just go back real quick. Oh, back here. <laughs> um, we're on our Managed Action Plan page and you have tabs for the narratives, programs, and documents. We're gonna talk a little bit now about this narratives tab here and what you're gonna see um, when you get into that. Um, this is the template section of the public action plan. And so when um, you're completing these narratives, just know that you can't delete any of these sections. These are all, if they have an asterisk next to them, they are required and you will have to complete them in order to submit the public action plan for HUD review. Um, so this is where you're going to be writing the story of your program and it explains how funds will be used. And all of these sections that are laid out here are the same sections that would have been in your paper published plan, um, you know, prior to this requirement of the public action plan. So you have a cover, you have the executive summary, you have an unmet needs assessment, you have a section for grantee proposed uses of funds, and then you have your appendix. Um, so this just mirrors the action plan, uh, the published plan template, and it just brings it over into DRGR. Um, to edit each of these sections, you're going to go over to the action column and click on that pencil icon that's highlighted there on the left, and that's going to open each section so that you can um, make your edits. So this just continues with all of the requirements on that narrative tab template. As you can see, there's lots of asterisks. All of those fields have to be completed before you can um, submit your public action plan. And there on the left next to the, the action column, you can see that there are there's a status. Either the section is pending, so you're still working on it, or it's completed, and we're gonna talk about that in a moment. 
So here's a screenshot of what it looks like when you click to um, edit a section um, and you're clicking on that pencil icon in the action column to open these fields. This is the narrative field for the cover as an example. Um, the tabs at the top provide grantees with formatting options. So um, all your narratives will be completed using 12 point times new Roman font, but you can bold, italicize, underline, you can justify your paragraph in whichever way you like. Um, and then, you know, you can also, you know, you'll be finish, finishing these fields that have asterisks on them. Um, there is sometimes pre-populated text that you're going to find when you open these fields to edit. If the text is italicized, it's providing you with some instructions on what you should be putting in that field. And you can go ahead and remove that instruction before you submit your action plan to HUD. Um, we'll talk in a minute that there is some pre-populated text that is not italicized that you do not want to remove, but this text that's instructional can be removed before um, submitting your action plan. Down here, this bottom box that's highlighted is the status of this section. So as I showed you on that previous screen where all the sections were listed, there's a status column that tells you if the section is pending or completed. This is where you change that status. So this is really helpful in just keeping track of what you have completed. There's, you know, better than more than probably 50 parts to this template. Um, and so it's really helpful to be able to see, you know, which sections are still left to be done. So as you're working on this, leave it open as pending. You may have multiple folks in your organization that are making changes or need to do reviews. It's going to stay as pending. When it's truly complete, you're done, no more edits, you change it to completed. And then you'll see on that um, narratives tab that, you know, the status has been changed to completed. And when you're done, you're going to click save over there on the bottom right side. <clears throat> So this slide is going to show you how to add tables. Um, so this is a table within your narrative. Um, this example of a table up here near the top, um, it shows you that, you know, it has three rows and four columns. You can customize how you create um, your tables here um, using the, the formatting um, icons just above it. You can also add URLs and photos in all of these narrative sections as well. So as I mentioned, for some sections, there's going to be pre-populated text in a regular font. Um, this font should not, this, this language here, and it's highlighted there in that bigger red um, highlight box, this should not be deleted. Um, the instructions will tell you when you should not overwrite or add any, or add to the boilerplate text, but this is boilerplate text that you want to keep in here. Um, anytime you have a narrative screen that has formatting functionalities like these bold edits, underlines, you know, creating tables and such, anytime you see that, you can use copy and paste to inc to add more information into DRGR. Um, there there are um, narrative boxes in other parts of DRGR that do not have these formatting options, and in those narrative boxes, you don't really want to use copy and paste because you'll get some funny characters when you try to look at the action plan as a download, for example. But if you see this formatting um, options here, then you're pretty safe to just copy and paste into the section. Um, so if you've been working on your action plan outside of DRG or in a Word document, you can copy and paste right into this. Um, so after completing a section of the narrative, again, you always want to change that status at the bottom from pending to completed and then save it. Um, and you can keep that as pending for as long as you need until it's truly done and then make it um, finalized by clicking on completed there. So some of the narrative sections in the template are actually tables that you need to complete. And so these are tables that are built into the template and they have fields that HUD is asking you to add information to. Um, so all of these boxes must be completed, and that includes adding zeros. So if for some reason you, you know, 
you are not going to have any, um, you know, uh, type of damage severe, number of properties zero, you want to put a zero. Um, don't just leave it blank. So you want to make sure that all these fields are filled out or you will get an error message. Um, then below these tables, you are going to have sometimes requirements to add a data source. Again, anything with an asterisk is required. If you don't complete it, you'll get an error message. So you're going to add a data source in either a narrative form or as a link. If you don't have a data source for the data that you've entered, then you have to put something because there's an asterisk there and it's required. So you just want to add an NA, um, not applicable. You can't leave the field blank though. So again, you're going to complete each section um, and then when it's ready, when everything's complete, you're going to change that status to completed. <clears throat> So just some some tips here. Um, I'm not sure why that is getting cut off, but it is. So this this header should say public action plan narratives tab tables tips. So these are some tips for working with those um, pre-populated tables in the narrative template. Um, the so the tables that HUD has put in there for you to complete. Um, you may not have data to populate, or you may determine that some required template tables are not applicable, um, but grantees should include information for, for the public, HUD CPD reps, and grant managers to understand um, and the determinations. So even if you think that it's not required, you have to put something in the tables. So you need to populate the tables with zeros or add some sort of text in there to explain. So um, grantees have the ability to create tables to include additional data within the narrative section, and that's the, what I was showing you in the formatting bar of those narrative sections. So there's kind of two types of tables, the pre-populated ones that HUD says, fill out this table for me, and then there are the tables that you can create within your narrative. Um, tables within the narratives can be formatted to add um, rows or columns, but Tables that are pre-populated that HUD says, hey, um, you know, fill this out. You can add rows, but you can't add additional columns for these preset tables. So any questions about the required tables should be discussed with your HUD rep. And then um, if they're unable to answer the question, they can forward it on to the HUD DRGR team if it's a system defect or something that's generating an error and they can't quite figure out why that's happening. All right, so now we're gonna go on um, and look at that programs tab. Remember back here, just real quickly, um, we have, uh, you know, we have our narrative tab. The next tab over is the programs tab. And so we're gonna go ahead and look at that programs tab um, in more detail. And there it is, didn't even have to go back. So, um, again, we're on the Manage Action Plan screen, so we navigated here from that columns icon, and we navigate over to the second tab, which is the Programs tab. Um, so we've been defining what programs are and how they interact with the other sections of DRGR, but on this page, you're going to see where you actually start adding your grantee program. So over on the right, there's an Add Grantee Program link. So you're going to go ahead and click on that to start adding your grantee programs. So here is the screen that you get when you click on Add Grantee Programs. Um, you can see that there are some fields that are grayed out. Those are pre-populated for you based on your appropriation and your grant number. You then have a drop-down. This drop-down is where you're going to choose your grantee program type. So these program types, again, are going to be customized based on your appropriations. So um, you're going to choose the grantee program type that you want to set up. This example is highlighting that they'll be setting up a housing program. Um, and once you choose that, then you go on to um, complete the rest of the screen, which includes a budget. So. Um, for this grantee program, you're going to 
um, pick your grantee program type, add a name there at the top, and then complete the budget field as well. And then once those fields are all completed, you click Save, and you created your grantee program. So on this screen, we're seeing that um, the, a series of programs have been created for this grant, um, including an economic revitalization program, a housing program, and an infrastructure program. And you can see in the red box there, we've highlighted that we actually have two grantee programs that are of the housing program type. So there is a multifamily rehabilitation housing program and a single family rehabilitation housing program. So you can have more than one of each grantee program type. Um, so this is just an example of how you might split up um, your housing programs into, into two different ones. Um, ultimately, when we get to the DRGR action plan, you will uh, be creating activities and then associating them with the, co the correct program. And this will help HUD um, review for compliance. Um, we're not going to get into a lot of the details of creating um, activities in this presentation, but again, um, there are lots of resources on the HUD exchange that can walk you through how to create those pieces of the DRGR action plan, your projects and activities, um, and then how to do the associating back to your grantee program. All right, so um, just to give you a general overview then again of your public action plan um, templates, this is, these are the basics. Um, all sections need to be populated and the status is changed to complete on each section before you submit the public action plan to HUD. Um, HUD reps will then review each of your sections for substance. Um, and so again, you'll have the cover page, a document abstract, an executive summary, an unmet, me unmet needs assessment, which includes the housing unmet need, public housing and affordable housing, infrastructure, economic development on that needs. You'll have a section on general requirements, the section on your grantee proposed use of funds, including all your grantee programs, and then the appendix. And in the appendix is where you're going to have your certifications, your summary of public comments, um, data sources and methodologies, definitions and terms, and your SF424. So that's going to be, that, that is what your public action plan template is. All these components right here. And again, they're the same as you would have put in your paper plan. You're just putting them out, building them out in DRGR. All right. So that is, we covered now three of those main, uh, we're covering two so far of those main um, public action plan tabs that we showed you earlier. So we had um, the narrative tab, the programs tab, and now we're gonna talk about the documents tab. So you can see it here on our manage action plan page in DRGR. We had the narrative tab, programs, we talked about both of those. We're now moving on to documents. Um, so here we are on the documents tab. And on this tab, you're going to see if there were any past supporting docu documents uploaded um, for this grant. You're going to see them listed here. Um, but you can add additional documents by clicking on that link to the right, which says add documents. Um, so you'll see um, that previously, these previously loaded documents here, um, you can access them by clicking on um, the eye icon to, to, to view them. You can click on the pencil icon to edit them. You can click on the trash can icon to delete them. But if we're adding a new one and you click on add document, you're gonna get a screen that looks like this. Um, here on the right, on the left, sorry, the pop-up is going to look like what's on the left says add supporting documents. Um, so some important criteria to keep in mind when you're adding documents is that there is a size limit to documents that you can add, and that is three megabytes. So if your document is bigger than three meg megabytes, you will get an error if you try to upload it. So um, just check that before you go to upload. You may have to break it up into multiple parts and just label them by part. 
uh, if you have a really large document that you need to get in there. So keep that size limitation in mind. And then there is a new feature that is going to be included in the next release, 8.5, which will be happening later. Um, and this new feature is whether this document should be um, public or private. Um, so public documents, if you choose the access type of public, this will allow anyone with access to the grant to see the attachment. If you choose the type of private for your access um, type, then only your assigned CPD representative can see the attachment. So again, public, anyone with access to the grant can see the attachment, private, only your CPD representative. And this is a, a function that's going to be included in the 8.5 release coming later this month. So you're going to choose one or the other, public or private. Choose, um, click on choose file. It'll take you to your, your computer. That's what you see here on the right. You choose your file, click to open it, and then it'll populate in the field. And then you can click save. And once you've done that, you will see, um, the documents populated on that um, documents tab. So a couple, just a best practice about naming your documents. You want to make sure that you don't use any special characters when you name your documents that you're uploading into DRGR because that can generate some, some errors. So try to avoid things like uh, hashtags and dollar signs, plus signs, things like that, that can give you some errors. Um, okay, so after you save the document, it's going to appear in your document list, and as I talked about before, you're going to have the ability to delete a document using the trash can. If you use the I icon in the actions column, you'll be able to download a copy of the document to view it, and then the pencil icon allows you to edit a supporting document, and that's what you see here on the bottom right side is the edit supporting docs um, modal which allows you to change the access type. You can upload a new file. You can rename it. So whatever you need to do to edit that document. <clears throat> All right. So you can also add links um, under the supporting links section. As you can see here, you give the link a name. You enter the URL, and you click Save, and then um, this is obviously after you've clicked the add link button there over to the right near the top of the screen. Um, so pretty self-explanatory, click add link, fill in the name and the URL. <clears throat> and again, once you've created that link, it's gonna show up in the list of supporting links on the documents tab in DRGR. Functionality works the same in the actions column with the trash can, the eye icon and the pencil icon. So you can go in and delete, view, and edit those links. Um, if you want to open the link from your list of links, you would click on the link, and you can see that hyperlink there is in the red box. You'd click on it. Just know that it's going to um, link into a, an additional browser tab outside of DRGR. And if you're outside of DRGR and you're working and reading about whatever's in that link, DRGR is still running in the background, and remember that you can be timed out of the system after 20 minutes. So just make sure you're popping back over to DRGR to click on something so that you don't get timed out. Um, <clears throat> so this is, um, again, just, you know, an example of if you'd been taken out of DRGR to, to review information from a link that you clicked on in the supporting link section. Okay. So our next topic is uploads. And remember, um, when we talked about uploads um, before, we said that you know you can use the uploads to work on components of your public action plan. You can also use the uploads to work on components of your DRGR action plan for your projects and activities. So this upload tab is really um, useful for both the public action plan and the DRGR action plan. Um, so here, um, once grantee programs have been added to the public action plan, grantees can upload their expenditure and outcome projections. So you will be using these data upload templates um, for 
outcomes and projections, and we're going to talk about those here. Um, to do the uploads, the functionality of them, you're going to go to the Upload tab in the Manage Action Plan screen. Um, again, uh, it's the last tab on the Manage Action Plan screen there that's highlighted. Um, and it's important to note that using upload templates is the only method available to add your projection data to DRGR. So you will have to use these upload templates for projections um, for your public action plan. So you'll have to get comfortable with these. I know some folks are a little bit afraid of uploads, but you shouldn't be. Um, they're actually pretty easy to do from a functionality perspective. People really only have trouble with uploads because of the data that they put into the template. Um, so it's mostly user error, um, not always, but mostly. So we're going to talk a little bit about some tips for making sure that you have a good solid template so that when you do your upload, everything gets in there. Um, users are, who are not familiar with projections of expenditures and outcomes can learn more by visiting the HUD exchange. So um, do an internet search for just HUD projections of expenditures, and this will help you navigate all the current guidance around this, because um, this is a required part of completing your public action plan. So just do a Google for HUD projections of expenditures, and you'll, you'll get more information around that. Now, if you haven't used the uploads before, like I said, they're pretty easy. There's really just three steps. You're going to choose your upload type, and that's that drop down that's highlighted there. You're going to choose the type of upload that you're going to do, and that's going to be pretty obvious from the upload template that you're using. Um, for, so, for example, the projection, the, um, the expenditures template or the outcomes template. There is a list of HUD templates on the HUD Exchange, and they're at that URL right there. Um, so you can go and take a look at all of those. I'm going to paste that into the chat as well. They're really easy to find, though. If you just Google um, DRGR data upload templates, there's really only one place it can take you. Um, but I'll pop that in the chat so you can take a look at those if you like. So all the templates are there. Um, so that's your first section. Choose your upload type. The second section, second section is to choose your um, your file, um, and that is actually at step five there, or number five, and then you would upload the data, and that's at number four. Um, but let's take a little talk a little bit about um, the upload type, particularly for the public action plan. So. This, this upload type box is going to include a list of action plan upload templates that are available. And remember, we're using this upload tab for the public action plan and the DRGR action plan, so there's going to be a list of templates there. But today we're really talking about two, and that is the GP expenditure projection add edit template, so your, your expenditure projection template, and the GP outcome projection add edit template, so your outcome projection template. Um, and you can find these, these both of these templates for um, expenditures and outcomes at the HUD Exchange link there. Um, so when you're uploading your expenditure data, you're going to use the expenditure template. When you're uploading your outcome data, use the outcome template. Um, other things on the screen that are important to know, uh, supporting info, the supporting info section contains a button that provides the existing DRGR data entered for the template that you've shown um, or that you've selected. So if you have the expenditure template highlighted in the drop-down box and you click supporting data, you're going to get the information that's already in DRGR on expenditures. So it's a pretty cool feature that just helps you see what's already in the system before you go adding anything to it or overwriting it. Um, okay, so <clears throat> so the two up upload templates that I just talked about there um, are highlighted here on your screen. So your expenditure template and your outcomes template, you do have to use these. You will only be able to get this information into DRG or by using the templates. So let's take a look here um, at... Um, at expenditure projection template first. Um, 
so just to just to note this is a tip um that's really important for when you're using upload templates is they are available on the HUD exchange in the CSV file format. Keep them in the CSV file format. You do not want to change that to Excel or anything else, um, or you will get an error when you try to do your uploads. So just keep them in that format. So as you can see here, um, this is just a little example of a, an expenditure template that's been populated. There are just four fields on the template, nice and simple, your grant number, your grantee program name, the quarter for the start date that you're entering um, projections for, and then your projected amount for that quarter, okay? So what's really important about templates and the reason most people get errors when they use them is that they've incorrectly entered information in the template and DRGR can't make sense of it because it doesn't already exist in DRGR as an identifier. So for example, your grant number or your program name, these have to be entered exactly as they are in DRGR, or when you do the upload, DRGR won't recognize it as a component of your action plan and it won't populate the data. It'll tell you you have an error. So for instance, if you had your grant number and you accidentally typed an N for Nancy instead of an M for Michael in your grant number, then you're gonna get an error because the system isn't gonna recognize that grant number. So always double check this information that exists in DRGR, make sure it's accurate. Same with your program name, um, you know, and that's for, that includes things like capitalizations, punctuation, anything like that, it has to be absolutely exact. So that's a tip to help you get a, a better quality upload. Um, in addition to that, um, know that you can upload more than one program at a time on a single template. So each one of them needs their own um, row. So for instance, if you had GP1 as a program and you also had GP2 as a program, you could put those on the same template. They, everything just needs its own row. So you don't have to do multiple templates for each program. Um, and then your file, your, um, your date format here in the uh, quarter start date column, you always wanna use the date format of a single digit month, single digit day, four digit year. So leave out the zeros from the month and the days um, and just do it as you see there on the screen. And then finally, for the dollar amounts, don't include any dollar signs um, or commas just decimal points, nothing else. Keep it nice and simple and you won't have any issues. All right, <clears throat> so um, let's now take a look at the outcome projection template. Um, so this is the second of the two required templates that you'll have to use. There are five fields in this template. Um, again, grantee number, or, or sorry, grant number, grantee program, those are things you're gonna pull right out of DRGR. And then the quarter start date for the projections that you're entering. And then these are the specific fields for this template um, for outcomes, the measure type name, and then the proposed total. So <clears throat> this measure type name column, um, this is basically the performance measure that's being used. And performance measures are linked to, pro to program types. So depending on the program type, that's gonna dictate the type of performance measures that you can actually choose from. And over here on the right side of the screen, you can see the different types of programs and their associated pro performance measures. So if you're doing public facilities, your possible performance measures are number of properties and number of public facilities. If you're doing the housing program, your possible performance measures are number of affordable units, uh, number of elevated structures, number of properties, number of substantially rehabilitated units. So you're gonna make sure you're familiar with what performance measures are available. And again, type them into this column <clears throat> exactly as they are in DRGR. If you have a typo in any of these, even if it's just adding or deleting a space, DRG, this DRGR will not understand how to do the upload. So it has to be exact. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so after uploading your template, um, the re results are gonna be displayed on the screen 
and there are three options for the results. You can either have a successful result, um, a partially successful result, or you can be unsuccessful. And we hope nobody ends up in that category. But we're going to tell you what happens if you do. So if you're successful, if you look at this first box here on the screen, um, you're going to see that the total, you're gonna, it's going to give you the total number of file rows that you had in your spreadsheet and then the uploaded number of rows. So which rows, how many rows actually got uploaded? And if those numbers match, you had one row and you uploaded a row, you're good. All your rows are uplo uploaded, you're successful. You know, if you had 106 rows on your spreadsheet and you got all 106, you're, you're golden. Now, if you're only partially successful, so that's that middle box, say you had 24 rows on your spreadsheet but only 22 uploaded, that's where we have to start to do some problem solving. And the system is really great in that it gives you the errors that were generated during the upload by clicking on the download upload details link. And you can see that in that middle box um, at the bottom of the box. So download upload details. If you click on that, it's going to give you a, a um, uh, Excel, like a CSV, I think it is, but a, a basically a spreadsheet that um, you can open. Um, and on that spreadsheet, it's going to go line by line and let you know if it was successfully uploaded or if there was an error. And then you can go back to your source upload document and figure out what possibly went wrong with that line and why it didn't upload. But everything else on that spreadsheet, if it says successful, you can be sure that it's in DRGR now. So if you go back to try to do an upload again, make sure you, re you remove any information that was successfully uploaded so that you don't duplicate information. Um, and you do have to look at the templates because some templates do um, add information and some edit information. So some of the templates will uh, just replace information. Uh, so just look at the template because it'll tell you if it's an add or an edit. And then finally, if you're unsuccessful, it's going to show you, you know, how many rows you had and that none of them were uploaded. And again, this uh, download upload details report is going to give you the reasons why it didn't work. Okay. If you do want to see what actually got uploaded and what was successful, you can click view upload data and that's going to show you what actually got uploaded into the system when your upload was successful. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, so this, this screen shows you an example of how grantees would have showed their projections in the paper published plan. Um, so this would have been what folks were used to submitting before the public action plan became a requirement. Um, so this is an example of what you would have seen in those paper published plans. Um, so again, you have your activity, you have your quarters, and then you have your expended, your projected expenditures. Um, so now what we're doing is we're just putting all this information in DRGR. All right. So I'll pause there, Hannah. Is there anything you want to cover before I move on to downloading and submitting? Yes, I do have a couple of questions that I wanted to cover. Let me go back up for a second. So there was one question that came in um, asking if the downloaded copy of the public action plan would include um, a table of contents and page numbers. And currently it will include a table of contents, but um, we are working to include page numbers. Um, but in the meantime, that is something that grantees can add once they download the, the Word version or you know, PDF version moving forward. Um, okay, let's see what else. We've had a lot of questions come in, and we're trying to answer them as quickly as we can. And if we can't get to everything today, we will respond to you all on these. Uh, we may even think about putting out an FAQ document on some of these. So that's why I'm not reading them all out loud, especially for the sake of time. Uh, let's see. We're getting a lot of questions about consolidated grants, and we will try to answer those. Um, those aren't really applicable right now. Um, 
So that's why I'm not reading those out loud. Let's see. Um, we got a question in asking if there was a track changes feature for the public action plan. Um, we do not currently have that feature in DRGR, but it's something we may add in the future. Let's see. I think that's it for now, Jennifer. Um, we had a we had a couple of questions just come in about the amendment process, but I know we're planning to discuss that, I believe, after this section, so I'll hold off on reading them out. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay. All righty. So moving on then, we're going to talk here about downloading and submitting the public action plan in DRGR. Um, because once you've gotten everything populated, you're going to be real excited to submit it. Um, so let's see how that works. Um, again, here we are in DRGR. We're on the Manage Action Plan screen. We're always accessing this screen through the columns icon there on the top toolbar, making sure you're in your right grant in that lock grant bar. Um, on the Manage Action Plan screen, you're going to see over here on the left side, these green links. Um, one is for the public action plan. One says submit plan. So we're going to talk about the um, the public action plan link first, and that's the one that's circled there. So <clears throat> if you um, if you click on that public action plan link. Um, this is going to allow you to view the public action plan either through a download of a PDF version or a Word version. Now, just keep in mind that the Word version option is going to be included in Release 8.5 later this month, and so this is going to be new um, for users and a very, very handy resource. So. Um, in the past, action plan documents, you can only download as PDFs, but you'll now be able to download these as Word versions, which is great because you can, um, you know, use them for your public comment. You can use them for translation services. Um, the When you download it, it may not look as pretty as you like. Um, the, the, the formatting is limited, but um, you can always take that Word version and, and apply any sort of pretty formatting that you want on it before you make it a public document. Um, so, but it is there in Word and you don't have to convert it. Well, it will be there in Word and you won't have to convert it once eight, the release for 8.5 8 um, comes out later this month. So that's your public action plan link there at the top of the page. But now let's look at the submit plan link. So that's the one that we um, will use when everything's ready to go to HUD. So you're going to click on that submit plan link. And when you click on that link, um, this submit action plan for review modal will pop up. And on this modal, and I know this is tiny, um, so for those of you who has a bit, have a big monitor, you may be able to see it, but I'll try to describe it here in good detail. So. Um, you're going to either choose that you're submitting your public action plan or you're submitting what says the action plan, which is your DRG or action plan of your projects and activities. So if we're talking public action plan, you're going to click the button for public action plan, and that's that little blue dot that you see up there on the screen. Um, so you're going to choose the action plan that you're submitting, um, and then you're going to enter a description of the action plan updates and you're going to add any submission comments for your HUD rep. So um, you want to be as clear and thorough as you can. Give your HUD rep as much information as possible because this is going to assist them in their review and get your review completed a lot faster and without so many questions. So provide as much information as you can in these fields. Um, in the uh, amendment type box, you're either going to choose a substantial or a non-substantial amendment. For your first submission of your public action plan, you're just going to leave it at substantial. And then um, the system actually populates a title for your, your submission. And if it's the first time you're submitting your public action plan, that title is going to say initial. Um, and we're going to show you what happens when you do amendments in just a moment. Um, so that's all you're going to do. Choose your public action plan. 
leave this as it is, as substantial and initial, add your descriptions and your comments, and then you're going to click Submit. All right, so let's look then at um, our public action plan amendments. So as you go along your program, you may come to a point where you have to make changes. Um, they may be substantial changes. They may be non-substantial changes. Either way, substantial or non-substantial, they have to be submitted through DRGR. So all changes that you make um, within the DRGR system or your public action plan on the narratives tab or the programs tab, this is going to change your public action plan status to modified resubmit when ready. So when you submitted it to HUD and it got approved, it had an approved status. Now it's going to have a modified resubmit when, when ready status. Um, so you're going to make, you know, make all the changes you need to make, and then that's going to need to be submitted to HUD again. To submit it to HUD, you're going to go through that same process of clicking on the submit plan link at the top right side of the page there. And you're going to get that modal that pops up. Again, you're going to select that you're submitting your public action plan. You're then going to choose whether it's a substantial or non-substantial amendment. Um, and then DRGR is going to populate that title. So for instance, um, if you're doing a substantial amendment and it's, you've already done two in the past, it's going to automatically know that and it's going to submit, it's going to say um, substantial amendment three. Um, so it's going to keep track sequentially of your amendments, whether they're substantial or non-substantial. You're always going to submit your, um, your descriptions and your comments to help your HUD reviewer. And then you're going to click on the submit green button at the bottom. <clears throat> now, just as a, um, just to go back here, you know, like I said, when you click on the submit plan, Link, you are choosing whether to submit your public action plan or your DRGR action plan. And you have to get your public action plan in there and approved first, and then you move on to your DRGR action plan. But you'll do that same process for your DRGR action plan um, once that is completed. So you're always going to be using this single submit plan button and just choosing which plan you're submitting. Um, the other thing I wanted to reiterate um, is that if for your up here, over here on the left side of the screen, right under Manage Action Plan, you have your grant number, you have your grantee name, appropriation code, and then you have your public action plan status. It gives you the status and your action plan status. That's your DRGR action plan. So both statuses are here on the screen. So if you're unsure, you can always just come into your Manage Action Plan page and it'll tell you what status each action plan is in. And a reminder, that your DRGR action plan, so this bottom action plan status, this needs to be approved in order for you to submit your QPR. Okay, so this one, the action plan status, has to be approved so you can submit your QPR. <clears throat> we get a lot of questions on the AAQ from folks saying, oh, I can't, you know, I don't have the submit button for my QPR, what's going on? And most of the time, it's because their action plan is not in approved status. So that has to be approved. However, you can have modified status on your public action plan and still submit your QPR. So um, just wanted to clarify that. All right. So I'm going to move into the tips and resources, and then we can just go to a wrap-up of the Q&A. Um, <clears throat> OK, so some tips. Um, you want to download your public action plan, and it's really a best practice to download a copy of the public action plan to have as a backup outside of DRGR. Download it after the release 8.5, download it as a Word version so you'll always have it so that if anything were to happen inside DRGR, there's some sort of glitch and a big section gets deleted or something, that's not likely to happen at all. But <laughs> it's always good to have a backup, and then you could always copy and paste back into DRGR. So, Make sure that you do download a copy of your act, public action plan <clears throat> so that you have a backup. Because um, that's going to be your, your HUD approved version too. A lot of times, you know, Word documents and version control can get sticky. So just, you know, once you get an approved action plan, download it, save it, tuck it away um, so that you have that as a backup. <clears throat> 
And downloaded copies of the public action plan, as I've been mentioning, are really helpful to complete your public comment process and your limited English proficiency translation requirements. So um, you, you know, you're required to comply with um, limited English proficiency requirements so that you have translations as required um, for your jurisdiction. Um, and it's a lot easier when you have a word version to start that translation process. As I mentioned um, earlier, the system does time out after 20 minutes. So if you're busily working in DRGR and you're over in the reports, um, they have the data analytics module, um, in which takes you into microstrategy, which is outside of DRGR. Um, <clears throat> if you're working in microstrategy, DRGR is still running in the background and it doesn't know you're still working. Um, so you have to be mindful of your time so that you're always doing something within DRGR every 20 minutes, even if it's just popping back over to the home page, anything to keep the system active. If you do get locked out because you time out, you'll have to wait about 30 minutes to get back into DRGR. Sometimes you get stuck in a loop and <clears throat> you need a session reset and you can go to the HUD exchange and get information on how to do a session reset Basically, all you do is send an email to drgrhelp at hud.gov, and you explain that you need a session reset in the subject line, provide your user ID in the body of the email, and then someone will reset your session. Um, so MicroStrategy reports, we've mentioned several times, uh, reports are available for grantees, and they're very helpful for your public action plan and your DRGR action plan um, planning and management. So when you're managing your program and you're submitting amendments and troubleshooting and reconciling data, um, it, they're really useful tools to help you through this. Um, don't forget about them. A lot of people kind of don't use them as much as they, they could. And life is a lot easier when you're able to see this aggregated data kind of rolled up in these reports. So um, definitely check out your MicroStrategy reports. Um, a reminder, we've said this many times, but just to summarize, the DRGR action plan portion is the same for all grantees. So whether you're required to do the public action plan or you're an old, older grantee that doesn't have to do the public action plan, the DRGR action plan with your projects and activities is going to be the same for all grantees. So any existing resources on the HUD exchange are going to be applicable. So there's going to be a lot of trainings and fact sheets and the DRGR user manual. Um, all of these would be great for new grantees who need additional training and guidance on the DRGR action plan, those projects and activities that you'll be setting up after you have your public action plan established. So uh, definitely check out the HUD Exchange. Lots of good information there. For policy and programmatic guidance, um, the Federal Register notices can be found on HUD.gov and the HUD Exchange for information on CDBGDR programmatic and policy topics related to the public action plan and just general requirements for the CDBGDR program. So when in doubt, you always want to contact your HUD representative. They are your greatest ally and resource in your entire disaster recovery program. So you want to make sure that you're reaching out to them if you have any questions, particularly in the setup of your action plans as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, the action plans are really the foundation of what happens in DRGR, particularly your activity setups. Um, <clears throat> and so you really want to make sure that you do a good job of setting those up. And if you have any questions at all, reach out to your HUD representative. <clears throat> so here are some um, tools and resources that we want to review with you. Um, we've talked a lot about the DRGR user manual. Uh, this complete manual is available on the HUD Exchange. There are about 35 chapters, um, so it is lengthy, but the chapters that are applicable to a lot of what we've been talking about today are Chapter 11 on the Public Action Plan and Chapter 13 on Grantee Programs. Um, there are other chapters, uh, Chapters 12 on Projects and 14 on Activities. Um, those will help you out when you get into your DRGR Action Plan. So lots of good information there, including screenshots with step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete the functionality within um, DRGR. 
You may still need, however, some guidance on what should go in the field, even though the manuals provide a lot of information on functionality. So, you know, go here, click this, that kind of thing. Um, the fact sheets are really helpful in giving you more guidance around the kinds of things that need to go in those fields, um, along with the programmatic guidance that we talked about on the last slide. So keep those in mind. Um, the fact sheets can be found there on um, the HUD Exchange at that link. I also mentioned earlier that we did a public action plan webinar on um, that is posted on the HUD Exchange. It's pre-recorded. Um, if you're not tired of listening to me, you can listen to that webinar as well and get a lot of information on how you actually complete the steps in the system because in that webinar, we do a live demonstration. Um, well, it's a recorded demonstration, I guess. So uh, it actually shows you with um, within the DRGR system, you can see me moving the mouse, clicking the field, populating information, um, so it is more of a demonstration video um, versus this video that gave you sort of a high-level overview of how all of this works. So definitely check out that video um, for more um, demonstration type instruction. So allocations for community development block grant, disaster recovery, and implementation of the CDBGDR consolidated waivers and alternative requirements notice. That's a mouthful. Um, there, that notice is very helpful. Uh, you, if you haven't read it already, you, you should. So there's a link for that. And then, of course, any questions that you have, first and foremost, I should say, go to your HUD reps. They're a great resource for you, um, and they're going to really be able to help you quickly and specifically because they know your programs. Um, but if you have a general question and you want to go to the AAQ, we welcome that. Um, you can go to the Ask a Question on the HUD Exchange. Um, there is a DRGR pool specifically for this. So if you're stumped on an error um, or something related to the technology, the DRGR AAQ is really great. But if you have a policy question, you definitely want to reach out to your HUD representative. And with that, um, Hannah, I will turn it back to you to see what questions you might want to share with everyone. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Um, I will start by saying that we've gotten a really, we've gotten a lot of really good questions, and so I think we are going to try to prepare um, an FAQ document based on questions that have come in. Um, I've got a couple of people have mentioned that they wanted a copy of this chat, but just look out for um, a document coming out soon that kind of will summarize all of these questions and answers. Okay, so let's see. I'll go through some of the other questions. Um, I also just wanted to mention again that currently we do not have any consolidated grants that are using the um, the public action plan feature. So for these FY20 grantees, they are not consolidated grants. So um, I just wanted to make sure that was clear because we got a lot of questions about people asking um, if the process was different for consolidated grants, but again, that does not apply in this case at this point. Um, let's see. Sorry, there's a lot of questions, so I'm just trying to scroll through. Bear with me. Um, we got a lot of comments about the public comments, and so in the narrative template that Jennifer was showing, there, you couldn't see each of the sections, but there is a section where grantees can include a summary of their public comments and their responses. And so I just wanted you guys to know that there is a section within the template where you can add in that information once you do post your um, public action plan for public comment. Let's see. Stephen, not trying to put you on the spot, but are there any questions that you want me to read aloud? Okay. 
you know, he's probably trying to answer the question. Yeah, that's what I was deep in thought. Uh, but no, I, I, if you just go through the answered questions, that'll be fine. Unless you're looking at the unanswered only. No, no, no. I'm looking at the answered. I just. I can't think of anything. I oh, gosh. Gotcha. Yeah. We'll stay on for another, for a little while, just to see if there's other questions that people want to submit. Okay. Yeah, and there's always, you know, there, um, if you, if you have questions after this webinar, I would definitely encourage you to go to your HUD representatives. Um, they can always reach out to um, Hannah and Steven and anyone else at headquarters working on the DRGR team to get information about these DRGR specific issues. And again, if it is a DRGR issue, you can submit an AAQ. Um, that's another option um, if, if, if you'd like to use it. Um, but there are a lot of resources out there and sometimes it's just hard to know where to start. Um, I completely understand that. There's a lot of information. So there's no harm in asking the question, where do I find more, more about this? Um, and, you know, we can definitely point you to, to uh, more resources or just answer the question for you. <clears throat> so, um, we, did, um, we did have a couple of comments and people writing in asking for, for us to provide a list of all of the narrative sections within the templates outside of DRGR and um, to include the instructions. So if people wanted to start preparing the public action plan outside of the system, they had something to reference, and we are going to work on putting something together, an outline basically together, and we'll put that on the HUD exchange. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, well, I think that um, we'll probably conclude our session. I do want to note that um, the DRGR, um, sorry, the, the disaster recovery clinic that is happening um, later this month will include a DRGR session as well. So if you have not signed up for that clinic, um, you can go to the HUD exchange and register. Um, and then you will be able to get even more information on the public action plan. Um, so that's yet another learning opportunity that's coming up in addition to all the resources that are available on the HUD Exchange. So with that, uh, just a reminder that we have recorded this presentation and it will be available on the HUD Exchange. It does take a couple weeks until we get the transcripts back and make everything 508 compliant. So um, just keep an eye out for that. It should just be a, a couple weeks before that gets posted and then this will be available for you to review as well. Um, again, the, the chat does include these slides, however, so we're gonna leave this line open for a little while so that if you want to download these slides, you can go to the top of the chat and there is a link where you can click to access these slides. So we wanna make sure that you're able to get them um, if you wanna grab them now. Um, so we'll keep this open for the next, you know, 10 minutes or so, uh, so that you are able to access that or scroll through information um, that we've been posting in the chat and, and grab that before we sign off. But we thank you so much for everything um, that you're doing for your communities. And thank you for being here and sticking around for a long and um, technical webinar. Um, we're great to have you. And um, we look forward to seeing you on the next DRGR webinar. Have a great day, everyone.